Hi, firstly, thank you so much for taking time out to support the new work of our Rifco Associates. Now, over the past 12 months or so, Rifco Theatre Company have supported over 60 freelance artists, from actors to directors, writers to editors, and everything in between from all over the UK, and all throughout a global pandemic, when much of the art sector had come to a standstill. Rifco prides itself in supporting new voices from British South Asian backgrounds. And if you enjoy what you're about to see, then be sure to check out all the information to find out how you can help to support the work that Rifco does in championing underrepresented artists from British South Asian backgrounds at the end of the film. We hope to see you all in a theatre near you very soon. But until then, please continue to support and enjoy our digital content from the comfort of your own homes or wherever it is that you might be. Goodish, written and performed by Sid Saga. There are things I know, things I understand, including, but not limited to, Hitler's consolidation of power in the 1930s, good flossing techniques for oral hygiene, not for dancing, up-to-date knowledge of when the barriers open at Euston. I know other things too, that I've been mothered by a human of limitless strength and care and resilience, that I've been seen in ways I will never be seen, that I find it hard to switch off. That according to Monzo, I made 87 transactions in prep in the last financial year that I am insecure about sex, that white people love baked beans, that I'm angry, that the reason for my anger is sadness, that the reason for my sadness is experience, that the experience of existing in a certain place with certain people can over time open wounds and salt those wounds and close them only temporarily and on the condition that you smile widely and thank them for the opportunity and that you hope to hear from them soon. These are some of the things I know. These are some of the things I think as I blink on the Northern Line at just after 9.30 a.m. Off peak, of course. Kennington by Charing Cross. The people on this branch wear white sneakers and corduroys, not like the suits and trousers to moored and via bank. Maybe it's because they have artistic jobs. There is an informality in that industry, an invitation to free yourself up and just be, apparently. I take in the train, the glimpses of the humanity in this city that we try to call home, the worries and the struggles and the quirks. There's a lady near the window, heavy eyelids, sips from a high-tech bottle with a logo of a consultancy firm on it. Think it burnt her tongue. A bloke opposite is halfway through Lolita. Odd choice. Properly into it. Furrowed brow and occasional glances to make sure no one's reading into it. I wonder what his day looks like. I wonder what his office looks like. Hot water tap, for sure. Hot desks, no doubt. Black man at reception standing next to those swivelling doors that I used to love as a kid. The world became a kaleidoscope. Wonder if he knows that black man's name. Wonder what he'll have for lunch. Seems like a cheddar and pickle man. Sort of guy who loves red meat from a Hampstead butcher but wouldn't say no to a chicken fillet special from a van. Sort of guy who looks at oat milk and thinks it's accusing him of crimes against humanity. Sort of guy who shows you around a two-bed in Finchley and claims the living room could work as a study, you know? What does he know, I wonder? Like, well and truly, no. Suit from Burton and shoes from Next. And now he checks a text and swipes and swipes and smiles and swipes. Wonder if it was a funny message. I guess I'll never know. Diversity and Inclusion Workshop. The house lights are on. Nick is dressed smartly and wears a lanyard. He drinks from a bottle of water it's set on the table. There's also an open laptop on the table. At the back of the stage is a projector screen on which we can see the title of the presentation. Welcome to Celebrating Truly Diverse Cities. 
presented by the Global Majority Foundation in association with the Home Office. The house lights fade. Nick addresses the audience directly. Wonderful to see so many of you here. Even if your attendance might simply be a way of keeping your line managers off your backs. Anyway, I'm sure you've done lots of these sessions in the past, so I apologize if any information seems repetitive. Um, these workshops are updated on a regular basis by our dedicated creative engagement and enhancement team to make sure that content continues to speak to our times and indeed, sadly, to our troubles. Today, we'll celebrate diversity. And before you groan into your lattes or bury your head in the equal opportunities monitoring forms, which by the way, are extremely important for compliance and funding. So please do fill them out before you leave. This isn't diversity in its box ticking, cringe making forms. This is about the delight in our differences, the strength in our similarities, a map to a common destination, unhindered by the roadworks of confusion, or the congestion of conflict, or the services of other negative things. So, without further ado, a starter for 10. He presses his clicker. A slide pops up on the screen behind him. So, here's an elderly, smiling, well-dressed white man, Sir Reg Highgate Clapham, a middle-aged Asian woman with glasses, Amy Wong, a young black man in a hoodie, Joe Williams, who is the head of cardiology at the local hospital. So here at the Global Majority Foundation, we are driven by the belief that cutting edge participatory design can very quickly elevate a presentation into a celebration. Uh, so please grab your handsets and after you've considered the slide, please press A, B or C to share your thoughts. Good luck. A timer appears on the slide counting down from 10 a new slide appears. The image of a young black man is highlighted, captioned with... So the head of cardiology is Joe Williams, the 27-year-old father of two, graduated from the medical school at Cambridge University. His passions include swimming, clay pigeon shooting, and visiting his holiday home in Whitstable. Whitstable, eh? Good choice, Joe. Well, there we are. And according to our statistics... Nick clicks and a new slide appears... 86% thought Sir Reg Highgate Clapham was the head of cardiology. 13% thought Amy Wong was the head of cardiology. 1% thought Joe Williams was the head of cardiology. Blimey, well. Right. Looks like we're all subtly restricted by our presumptions and assumptions. But we'll get there. And if we don't, you can have your money back. So it's worth clarifying, these workshops are only partially refundable if either party cancels more than 14 days before the date of an event. Nick is distracted by something at the edge of the stage, a small boy in a Manchester United shirt, circa 2001, and wearing a cricket helmet enters. Nick stares at the boy, momentarily thrown. The boy is still. Right, let's talk unconscious bias. Audition. Nick is in a chair, centre stage. The boy has disappeared. Nick speaks in a northern accent. I was pathetic tonight in the pub with the lads. We were sat drinking, telling jokes, playing music, telling more jokes. Jokes about sex, thick Irish men, wog jokes, chink jokes, packy jokes. And the biggest joke was me. I was laughing the hardest and they laughed at me because I was laughing it seemed as if the whole pub was laughing at me one giant grinning mouth I just sat there and I watched them and I didn't belong I was crying crying so hard I couldn't catch my breath so I ran and I kept on running when I got home my dad was here praying and I watched him Tarek and it was right to be here to be a part of this place to belong to something it's what I want I know my dad will always be a problem but I can handle that now Perhaps I'll make him change, but I don't want that out there. It's not who I am. It's as alien to me Can as... I stop you there? Oh. Uh, Nothing was wrong, don't worry. Okay. It's just a note from the director, basically. <laughs> He's sort of keen, basically, to find something raw. You know, to tap into something a bit more sort of frenzied, you know. So, does that make sense? I think so. Yeah, 
Yeah. Okay, great. Should I go again? Yes, please. Is it? Yeah, yeah, fine. This camera, oh fuck's sake. Oh God, sorry. You're fine, don't worry. They are a pain. God, they are, aren't they? Yeah. Honestly, the amount of times I've had to do a self-tape and my mate comes around. Right, okay. So, uh, raw, right, frenzied. Yeah, yeah, it's, you know, east is east, but not up north in a grey town somewhere off the M1. <laughs> this is real, you know, uh, today, it's all those themes, but today, the, the mixed marriage, the anger, the abuse, you know, the, like, like, like a mate of mine, she's black, or well, a you know, mix, blah, 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 doesn't matter, I suppose, but she just split up with this guy and, well, um, it was his religion, really, yeah and his family, his religion and his family. And it was an awful, awful, like really horrid, awful relationship because of how toxic that stuff makes it. When you're ready. How was it, mate? Fine, yeah, not bad. Sweet, fingers crossed. That's Tom, good guy, very sound asks the right questions at the right time, but tends to dance around the surface when he knows there's a bit more to unpack. A highlight was finding out his ex-girlfriend's gran had died and taking her to Five Guys because she honestly loves burgers, mate. She's never happier. They were up till four that night. Smashed glasses, smashed plates, proper EastEnders vibes. Key difference, though, is that the characters in EastEnders don't tend to break their flatmates' Edinburgh Fringe Festival souvenir mugs. Just about over it. How was your day, Tom? Fine, mate. Yeah, not too shabby. He cracks on with curry making. Smells good. Really good. Reminds me to actually take mum up on her promise and spend a day going through her favourite recipes. It's been a conversation for ages now, but I've been putting off because there's something about only buying okra and ginger paste and curry leaves and frozen maple rotis from corner shops in Slough and Wembley. It just makes pesto and pasta seem incredibly appealing. Curry is it? Imran's here too now, which is a shame because he's a prick. Smells good, bro. Tom thinks he's a prick too, but I can see the traitorous grin peering at the edges of his mouth. Imran opens the fridge and grabs a can of monster energy, all 500 milliliters of it. Now, there's a useful algorithm I rely on when it comes to energy drinks. If you've not stopped drinking them at least two years into higher education, just fucking stop. Imran's doing a master's, so. He shuffles off, smelling faintly of the tube and... Fennel? Weird. Weird guy, to be fair. Don't get cocky. Tom looks up, confused. You what? Just because an Asian person thinks your curry smells nice doesn't make it a proper curry. Tom laughs and I leave, heading for the sofa with a peppermint tea in tow. I like it when Tom laughs. You know you've done well. And he's been hardened by two and a half years stuck in a government accelerator scheme for teachers, which basically involves taking enthusiastic graduates and sprinkling them among some of the worst performing schools in the country and rewarding them with a problematic lack of disposable income. So if Tom can laugh after that shit, then fair play to him. Nick switched the TV on. Question time. And a question from Leanne now. What's your question for the panel, Leanne? Oh, yeah. Hi. Hello. Yes. Hi. Uh, yeah. My question. Yeah. My question for the panel is, well, maybe it's more of a statement than a question, but hey, ho, I'll give it a go. <laughs> Need to speak honestly, don't I? Yeah. There's no point messing about and wasting everyone's time, but I'm fed up. Fiona, I'm utterly fed up. I can't take it anymore. I just do not believe that I'm committing some sort of racist or xenophobic or whatever new word the woke brigade want to chuck at me when I say that these boats and dinghies and all the rest of it should absolutely be sent back to France, no ifs, no buts. Is that your question? Well, no, actually, no. The, 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 the question is, what would the panel do to ensure the safety of me and my children and enable us to live peacefully without being threatened by all these new arrivals? Nick switches the channel. The TV fades into the background.
Bro, that show is mad. It runs back. Thought I could smell fennel. Yeah, it is a bit. He eats, sips from his can of chemical plunder. Eats, chews, fucking long chews. When I try and focus on the telly, I can only hear his mouth. Motoring along, wet and squelchy, like a tiny little tractor caught in a puddle on a badly maintained B road. Are you eating? Yeah. Would you eat? Picked something up on my way home. Is it? Yeah. I can hear him thinking, lining up his next inquiries, and that pisses me off. Surely it doesn't matter that I spent six quid on a lukewarm wasabi near Leicester Square because I just could be fucked for some homemade pasta and pesto. It's been a long day, which is exactly what shows like The Apprentice are made for. Long day, dream slightly pissed on again, watch a carefully staged television programme where dickheads in slim-fitted suits from River Island sell organic diffusers to Sainsbury's. It's the small mercies. Nick switches channels, the voice of Alan Sugar saying something obnoxious. It's pricey, isn't it? Fuck's sake. What's pricey? Eating out all the time. It's not all the time. It's probably an average amount. Is it? It is. I like cooking, innit? It saves money in the long run. I love it when a postgrad student in media studies that you found lurking in the pits of spare room offers you unsolicited accounting advice. Plus, it's nice to experiment, isn't it? There's some sick recipe cards in that little waitress recently. This sausage and fennel ragu is banging, man. Sausage. I turn to Imran, curious, like a master carpenter who is literally in the process of turning tables. Yeah, what? Thought he didn't eat pork. He kisses his teeth, eyes down. I've got him. Ah, that's just weekends. Trying this five two thing. I'm sure the Prophet Muhammad would approve. I don't actually say that last bit out loud, by the way. That would be mental, but I thought it, which is definitely a bad thing. Did you see Little Women? Loved it, yeah, that best bit, heartbreaking. Now that's the kind of film you'd be very good in. Really? Of course. Well, Little Women. Yes, that's what it's called, darling, but what about the men? No, that handsome one. Oh, what's his name? Uh, Happy Valley Hunk. James Norton? Huh, James Norton, such a lovely smile. You could be a James Norton. How uh, was your day anyway, Mum? Oh, fine, darling, fine. The same as always. No space in the car park. Some IT hardware date. Software update. And then I visited a client who begged me for a new care package on top of the existing package, which Mrs. Wilkes wouldn't even qualify for if I hadn't pulled strings. Tears in her eyes. My father needs this. My father needs that. No money, no money. And she says this to me in the second reception room of a recently refurbished house with an electric gate in Gerard's Cross. She'll file a complaint, I'm sure. God knows, but yeah, this country. You've eaten enough. Loads. Thank you times a million. You're sure, darling? Honestly, any more and I'll turn into a lentil. Don't you ever worry, okay? Yeah, I know. You're worried. Mom. I'm always here, beta. I know. She stops. Smiles. There's a world of meaning and understanding and care in her smile when you can really see it. It draws you in. Tells your worries to retreat and your mind to slow right down. And then she says, Has Papa spoken to you? Lights and sound shift. The young boy in the helmet appears, facing away from the audience in the corner of the stage. Nick sees him. Baggage is a funny thing. 
very easily layered. The word, I mean, baggage, not like actual layering of your bag. Though no judgment if you fancy going for that. Bubble wrap on the Samsonite, padding on the East Pack. Might get a look or two in departures, but joke's on them because that China teapot you picked up a duty-free is looking fine. Anyway, Heathrow, the 90s. It's clean and modern and full of activity, and a young man from New Delhi takes a tentative step into a green and pleasant land. A bit bloody grey in reality. Frosty. And that's just the people, he thinks to himself, as he finds himself in a new job in a new place with a brave face and a nagging sense that this is wrong, so wrong. But fortune favours the bold, he thinks. Time to seize the day, he thinks. And soon he saved up for a jacket from Barber and he really looks the part. The part where um, England opens its tired arms, weak and strained from all those minutes and hours and days and years and decades and centuries. Christ, centuries of throttling people who look like him to keep them in their place. But this is a new place and with a brave face, things will be okay. They have the 11 plus here. They have a welfare state. They have an ombudsman to address the consumer's concerns with the service they've received in the property and energy and financial sectors. But the baggage will weigh him down. As soon as he's out of Terminal 3, it's like a weight he's never felt before. He's a young man from New Delhi in a green and pleasant land. But it soon becomes very clear that he can't carry that weight anymore. The boy exits. We're back at mum's house. Nikhil, darling. Yeah. Has Papa spoken to you? And when she says those words, I know something's up. <laughs>